Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this beautiful French vanilla button cowl. It is worked in rows of double crochet stitches and puff stitches. So it makes a really interesting and fun texture to work on when you're making this project. And these puff stitches too help trap a little bit of warmth without being overly hot. So it's also secured with this wood button. You can use any button you like. I, I chose this light wood button because I thought it just looked so pretty with this yarn. And if we open it up, it actually has very, very simple construction. It, all it is is a large rectangle, and then we've added a button to secure it. So it kind of just buttons with, if you open it up, bring these two corners down and button into one of these decorative holes. And then this is, um, you know, where your neck would go, okay? So let's get started. The finished cowl, it's rectangle, has a length of about 23 inches and a height of about 10 inches. However, working more rows, if you want yours to be longer and more drapey, working more rows of the pattern will make your rectangle a little bit longer. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a six millimeter J crochet hook, a button. I have here a really pretty wood toggle button that I'll be using, but any button you like, and some worsted weight yarn. I'm gonna be using some, uh, it's called the Mighty Stitch from Knit Picks. It's a worsted weight yarn, and I used one skein of this is 208 yards. So I use the full skein of this. And in case you're wondering, this is called the Oyster Colorway. And it's really soft and satiny. But any worsted weight yarn you like would be great for this project. So let's get started. Our button cowl has a starting chain of 44. So what we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, and bring up a loop, and then tighten. Now we're going to make our starting chain. As, like I said before, this uh, cowl has a starting chain of 44, but if you want to change the width, the multiple is two plus four, just as a side note, okay? So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty, forty one, forty two, forty three, and forty four. Okay, so here is our starting chain and it kind of gives you an idea of the width this is going to be. This is um a nice wide cowl and it kind of drapes really nice when you button it up. Okay, so let's start the foundation row. So what we're going to do is in the fourth chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. So count one, two, three, four chains. So in this chain right here, we're going to work a double crochet chain one. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. That's the double crochet. Then we're going to chain one, okay? So, in the next chain, we're gonna skip that chain, and then the chain after that, we're going to do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one. So work a double crochet, then a chain one. Skip the next chain and the chain after that. Double crochet, chain one. Skip the next chain and the chain after that. Double crochet, chain one. Okay, we can get some more yarn. Skip the next chain and the chain after that, double crochet, chain one. We're gonna do this all the way across to the end of the row until we have just two chains left. Okay, so skip the next chain, next chain, work double crochet, chain one. So I'm gonna continue working across and then we're gonna go all the way till we have just two chains that remain on our row. You can kind of see what we're have so far here, okay? Okay, so I'm just coming up to the end of the row with my double crochet, chain one sequence. Chain one, 
We're going to skip that next chain in the very last chain, work a double crochet. So our foundation row is all set up for us now. Looks like a, a little ladder. Next, what we're going to do is chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. We're going to be working a puff stitch, then a chain one into each one of these double crochets across our row. So to make a puff stitch, we need to locate this first double crochet and we're gonna work into the stitch. So this little loop at the top here, we're gonna work into that, okay? So to make a puff stitch, wrap yarn around hook and insert it into the stitch. Bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the same stitch and bring up a loop. You'll have five loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the same stitch and bring up a loop. You'll have seven loops on the hook. Now I like to kind of give it a little tug because we're going to be bringing our hook back through all these loops, okay? So wrap yarn around hook, now bring it through all seven loops that are on your hook, okay? and then chain one to close the stitch. So it'll look kind of like that, okay? Very pretty stitch, shows off the yarn very nicely, okay? So we're just gonna do the same thing in each one of these, these double crochets all the way across our row, okay? So let's do a few more, and then we'll go ahead and work the row and rejoin at the end, okay? So let's do one more together. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that next double crochet stitch of the row, and bring up a loop, three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the stitch, and bring up a loop, five loops are on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the same stitch, bring up a loop, seven loops on the hook. Give it a little tug to kind of straighten everything out. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all seven of those loops. Sometimes some of them can get caught. That's okay. If you need to redo the stitch, totally fine. Then chain one to close the stitch. Not all puff stitches come out perfectly pretty, and I often will go back and redo one if I don't really like the way it looks. Totally fine, okay? So what we're gonna do is just work these puff stitches in every single one of these double crochets all the way across the row, finishing each one off with a chain one at the top, okay? So just continue working your puff stitches all the way across. There's another one to show you. And then when we get towards the end of the row, I'll show you how to finish off the row and transition onto the next row. All right, I'm just working that last puff stitch of the row. And then we're going to finish off the row, okay? Just bring it through all seven of those loops. And then chain one. Okay, to finish off the row, just work a double crochet into the top chain of your turning chain from the previous row. Okay, so our puff stitch row is complete. It looks very, very pretty. Okay, so for round two, or row two rather, we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and turn. We're going to work a double crochet into the top stitch of these puff stitches in each one. So a double crochet and then a chain one, okay? So double crochet right into the top of that puff stitch, just like that. So double crochet, chain one. Next puff stitch you come to, right in that little loop at the top. Double crochet, chain one. Next puff stitch, Double crochet, chain one. I'm just gonna do this all the way across. Okay, so let me show you what we have so far. So they're just kind of stacked right on top, okay? I'm gonna keep working my double crochet chain one in each puff across, and then I'll show you how to complete this row as well. Okay, I'm just working my last double crochet chain one into this last puff stitch. Okay, and then to finish off the row, we'll work a double crochet into the top chain of our turning chain. Okay, 
So this pattern just has a simple two row repeat. So we're just gonna finish um, off our button cowl by working uh, row one, this puff stitch row, and row two over and over and over until it is as long as you'd like it to be or until you run out of yarn, whatever comes first. So I'm just gonna continue with mine and then we're gonna um, finish off our cowl next. Okay, so I'm just working that very last puff stitch of the last row of the project. Okay, and then that double crochet into the turning chain as well. Okay, so I basically just worked mine until I was almost out of yarn. I wanted to save a little piece for the button to add later. So what you're gonna do when you're finished is just go ahead and fasten off just cut the yarn and fasten it off. I ended up having dimensions of, let me open this up to show you. Get my yarn out, I just had a teeny tiny bit of the yarn left. Um, mine ended up being 23 inches long and about 10 and a half inches tall, okay? So what you're gonna do to finish your cowl is to just take your tapestry needle and thread it. We're just going to weave in the ends. You should have two ends unless you uh, joined a ball of yarn and you'll have one in the center as well somewhere along the way. So we're just going to weave this in both directions. Come in one direction then bring it back through the other direction just to lock that in a little bit. If you're weaving it through puff stitches, just try and get it through the middle of them so they're hidden. And then we can just trim and repeat for the other side. So once we're finished weaving in the ends and our rectangle is completely done, we're going to add the button. So what I like to do is lay it out flat and then imagine it's gonna be wrapped around a neck. So you wanna take these two corners. We're gonna be sewing the button onto this corner here because the um, cow will be wrapped around the neck in sort of a, a drapey way and then buttoned here, okay? So basically you're taking the two top corners, this is where you'll be buttoning it on using these decorative holes and this is where the button will be attached, okay? So just these top two corners, just bring them in, the button will be on this left corner here, okay? So what we're gonna do is grab our button and grab our tapestry needle and you want to make sure your tapestry needle can easily fit through the buttonholes. If not, then you'll want to select a button with larger buttonholes or a smaller needle to accommodate that. So all we're going to do is cut a length of yarn about 12 inches long and then just go ahead and thread the tapestry needle. Now my buttonholes for my button are very, very large, so I'm gonna to have to go through this a few times so it's not all floppy and loopy, okay? So locate a spot in this left upper corner of your project. And I also wanted to mention as a side note, when you make puff stitches, sometimes um, one side of them looks a little different. So locate your favorite side of the piece some people, um, they look very similar. Mine always look a little bit different on the back than they do on the front. So just pick your favorite side and sew the button to the front of that favorite side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is find a spot for our button. And I'm gonna put mine just right here, just in this corner, not at the very edge, but just kind of close to the edge. And then we're just going to bring it up from the back to the front and then back down. Okay, and then we're just gonna do that a few times. And I'm using a matching piece of yarn because as you can see, when you sew it on, it matches and everything coordinates very nicely. Some people prefer to use a needle and thread. I like to just use yarn and a tapestry needle, but it's totally up to you. Whatever you feel most comfortable um, doing to, to incorporate your button onto your project. My yarn tail's starting to pop through. There we go, okay. So we're just gonna go through a few times, and I'm gonna go a few extra times than I normally do just because these buttonholes are so big. And I used a lighter wood because this is like a vanilla colored yarn, and I think just think it matches really pretty. Okay, so I went a few times, and then make sure everything's nice and snug. 
And then we're just going to tie it. Just a couple of really strong knots just to the back. And then when we're finished adding the button and it's on there nice and securely, I'm adding a few extra. I tend to over knot, so <laughs> you don't necessarily have to do as many knots as me. But you can see it's on there really nice and securely and the yarn in the middle here matches and looks very pretty. So what you want to do is weave in these ends from the back. Just keep them towards the back and get them hidden and keep them hidden. Okay, so just go in one direction, come back in the other direction. And then you'll just take your scissors and trim and then just repeat for the other little piece as well. Okay, so we can weave that one in as well. So you'll have two. So just go in one direction, just keeping everything on the back so it's not showing from the front. And then come in the other direction and then just trim that tail as well. Okay, so then our French vanilla button cowl is complete. It looks very, very pretty. And we can use, again, these little decorative holes to kind of button that into place. Okay, so it'll look different on your neck. It'll be a little bit more drapey, as you can see from the photo at the beginning of the video. But it looks gorgeous. And this is a color that's really nice for fall or winter. Um, and it's it's a worsted weight, so it's nice and lightweight. It's, it's just... Sometimes I even wear cowls in the house on a really chilly day. So it's a really nice weight. It's soft as can be. And that's it. That's how you crochet the French vanilla button cowl. Thanks so much for watching. And be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.